Hi, <coughs> welcome back to CVM 305. Our next topic, last class we saw something about strains. Our next topic is to figure out what is meant by material analysis. Actually, it is material response analysis. At a rough level, what it means is that how do external forces and hence stresses relate to, to the change in shape of the body. So, if you apply, so if you take some body and you apply some forces to it and we have seen this many many times up to now which is that it causes some stresses inside the body, all kinds of things will happen inside the body, ok. So, if I take a chunk of material, I have sigma xx, I mean sigma yy, sigma xy, all this stuff. All this stuff. So these are the forces per unit area acting on the body. Correspondingly, depending upon the nature of the body, it will deform. What used to be a, what used to be a body like this may become a body like that, as you saw with the balloon experiment. So it will deform a lot if it is a balloon, if it is a soft material. If it is a stiff material, it may not deform a lot. So for example, steel under normal operating conditions may not deform a lot. But even that we saw with the, with the deep drawing operation that you could make steel deform like, like clay. You know, you can make it into some all kinds of shapes and that is the key for most of our uh, most of our industries, all the things that we use are actually based on taking something and deforming it into some other shape. So what happens is deformations fall into two broad categories. And the two broad categories are temporary and persistent. Temporary means when you remove the load, it will come back to its original shape. Persistent means when you remove the load, the shape is fixed. Okay. Now, in the temporary category, there are two kinds. Okay. The two kinds are recovers instantly like a rubber band. If it recovers instantly like a rubber band, this will be called elastic. If it recovers slowly after a long time, so typically this is uh, you know like one of these rubber bands when it is hot, you know what I mean. So this kind of response will be called viscoelastic. This is actually what is there in your, um, in many of these uh, shock absorbers and things like that. This is shock absorber response. This is elastic rubber band response. The persistent also comes along into two categories. One is 
shape is not recovered at all or current shape is not recovered at all this kind of a thing happens with fluids so that's what we mean when we say it takes the shape of the container because what it means is that whatever shape is currently there it will stay in that shape if you change the force even a little bit it will go to a new shape right there are some materials for which current shape part of the current shape but not everything is recovered so when you roll dough you can see that you know i i'm i'm, I'm always giving you dough example because that's actually the easiest that you can see so for example if you're rolling a tortilla or if you if you're making cookies or something like that if you try to roll it you will see and pizza is very very clear you stretch it you let go it will come back but not all the way right you have to keep pulling it and pulling it and pulling it and pulling it before you can make it into a circle right because every time you pull it part of it comes back on the other hand many plastics if you deform it they will stay deform sand for example will take whatever shape you make it so you move it a little bit you may have to apply a certain amount of force before it starts deforming but you deform it it will stay that way those kinds of things so if there is no shape recovery at all then they are usually called plastic if they are partly recovered or they will be called elastoplastic or plastoelastic or elastoplastic so you got four kind of categories if the if it recovers completely instantly as soon as you remove the load it jumps back like a rubber band that's called elastic if when you remove the load it slowly comes back all the way it's called viscoelastic and it's called a viscoelastic solid because it retains its original shape if whatever shape you get even for the smallest amount of force whatever shape you get it stays that way it is typically called a plastic material in extreme case of that is a fluid if it recovers partially it's called plastoelastic like viscoelastic it's called plastoelastic or uh, elastoplastic which is the more common name in some cases you can get a combination of viscoelastic and plastic that is you can get something that is here that will recover its shape recover part of its shape slowly this will be called visco plasto elastic or the more common name this is not what people do they call it elasto visco plastic or elastic visco plastic okay that means well plastic means it won't recover shape right it won't recover completely visco plastic means visco elastic means it will recover somewhat over a long period of time so what happens is part of whatever you deform will come back over a certain period of time typically this kind of thing happens when you are at very high temperature okay this usually at a steady forces this will be called creep okay so there are a wide variety of responses to applied forces and which material responds which way or which material responds which way under what conditions is actually a very interesting setup the relationship between what stresses you apply and what kind of response you get is called a constitutive equation
और कॉन्स्टिट्यूटिव रिलेशन रिलेट्स अप्लाइड एक्सटर्नल इफेक्ट्स टू रेस्पॉन्स सो इन आवर केस द स्टिमुलस इज अप्लाइड एक्सटर्नल फोर्सेस एंड आवर रेस्पॉन्स इज डिफॉर्मेशन if it relates forces to deformation this is called a mechanical constitutive relation so that kind of thing so relating stress temperature sorry strain and time because notice all these things this relationship is usually called a mechanical constitutive relation so there are several different types of mechanical constitutive relations so let us look at a couple of them so that we understand how this works so i'm going to draw some curves and we will see whether we can figure out which class of material it is so what happens is i take a material and i'm going to plot strain along the y axis strain along the x axis and stress along the y axis okay sorry let's not do that let's do that in a slightly different way i plot stress versus time and i plot right below it there i'm going to plot strain versus time so i'm going to just steadily increase the stress and then i'm going to steadily get it down to zero right and what happens is i steadily increase the strain and i steadily get it down to zero right notice that as i decrease the strain as soon as i start decreasing the stress can you see that if the strain starts decreasing so stress increases implies strain increases stress decreases implies strain decreases eventually stress goes to zero implies strain goes to zero also this is very nice because this implies stress and strain are directly related time is not involved it doesn't matter the same stress will always give you the same strain and it recovers fully so this is called elastic and stress and strain are related in a linear sorry stress and strain are related not in a linear way apologies stress and strain are related but not time dependent so if you release the stress strain comes back immediately okay so this is called elastic and for elastic materials it is convenient to draw stress versus strain a typical metallic material will look like this a typical polymer like a rubber band will look like this by the way this will be 20 mega pascals this will be 200 mega pascals so i want you to understand or maybe 100 mega pascals so i want you to understand that and similarly this will be strain will be something like 40% and here strain will be 0.2% 
That means the change in length per original length is 0.2. Hardly any change in length. That's why metals look as if they are rigid. But um, rubber band looks very flexible. Okay. The interesting thing is, if you let go, they just come back along the same path and they'll go back to zero. If I let go, so it moves up and down along this line. The easiest group among them is the one in which this relationship between stress and strain is a linear relationship. And that is called Hooke's law. Hooke's law relates stress and strain in a linear manner ok so if you do a typical test so what happens is I am going to just write, write this thing down in for just a, uh, for just planar deformations so if I plot uh, my forces are here so notice in a plane I have sigma xx, sigma yy, uh, sigma xy and correspondingly I have epsilon xx, epsilon yy, gamma xy. The relationship between these two things is through a matrix and what is the size of this matrix? Is it obvious to you it is a 3 by 3 matrix? Right? This is a linear relationship. That is why you know linear algebra is, is essential to mechanics because a lot of the relationships are linear relationships and you have to work with them. Okay? So that is a very key thing. So if I do a linear relationship, I will get A, B, C, uh, D, E, F and then it turns out something very, very interesting. For most of the materials that are tested, not all because testing can never be 100% right. But what happens is typically you will get B, C, E. That is, it is symmetric. And this matrix of constants is called the elastic moduli. And Hooke's law is applicable to materials for which there is a linear relationship between stress and strain and there is no permanent deformation. Loading, unloading, removing the loads will cause the material to come back instantly back to its original shape. There is no permanent change in shape, there is nothing. Okay? Those are linear elastic materials. Typically speaking, for metals, this would be a reasonable assumption. For metals, this works reasonably well up to about 0.2 percent strain. Beyond that, what will happen is it will start having some permanent deformation. So, all our constitutive relations are based on certain regimes of deformation. You cannot say steel is elastic, that means nothing. You can say if you keep your stresses to a reasonably low level so that the deformations are less than 0.2 percent, then steel reacts like an elastic material. Rubber band on the other hand will not obey Hooke's law. It is still elastic but it is not linear. It has a non-linear behavior and it obeys something called a neo hookian or new hookian law roughly and if you deform it a lot even rubber will undergo some peculiar changes and it will not be elastic anymore if you deform it reasonably slowly and you do things reasonably well then you will get an elastic response for all these materials and one, the material for which the elastic response is linear is called Hooke's law okay we are now going to look at what are the different elements that, that, are, that appear in the matrix that corresponds to the elastic moduli and what do they mean. That is our next class.